Morning, everybody. How are you? It's a beautiful day. Yeah? So we've been talking about the decision making process. It's now time to summarize the whole event itself and the process itself. So there are many inner clues that help you to know when is the time to correct any decisions made. The two most obvious are confusion and dissatisfaction. Ironically, these are considered negatives instead of positives. And I know it's hard to upset, I accept, but an upset in your life is actually beneficial in that it tells you you're off course in some way and you need to find your way back to a particular path of clarity once again. Your confusion and dissatisfaction are telling you that you're off track. And as the Chinese proverb says, if you don't change your direction, you'll end up where you're heading. So physical pain is easy as it's been, as be, as beneficial. Even though it can be very uncomfortable, it shows you straight away there's something wrong. For example, if you have a sharp pain in your side, it could be appendicitis. Now, I'm not saying that for the people that are fearful. <laughs> That's just an example. <laughs> so don't take that literally because you've got a sharp pain. If you don't pay attention to it, though, you could die. So mental pain is just as much a blessing because it's telling you something that's wrong with the way your life is going. It is a sign that something needs to correction. Whether it's the way, the way you think about the world or the way you're doing about the world or both. The pain is simply saying, hey, that's not it. The way to figure out how to get back on course through, is through the exploration process, reaching out through self-help books, uh, workshops, friends, um, support groups, therapy, or whatever seems right for you when you reach out for help. As long as you're open to reaching out, help will be there. So remember, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. You'll never be ready if you're busy protecting the course that you have chosen for yourself. And we talked about this the other day about, you know, I've gone so far, so I have to keep going. You'll be perpetually off course and never reach your destination if you keep doing that. When you're constantly aware of the clues that signal it's the time to correct, you will always end up in the right spot, or at least in its vicinity. And we spoke about the pilots yesterday. 90% of the time, the plane is never on course, but it just keeps correcting itself over that period of time to get to their destination. And they still get there on time and safely. So here's a quick handed review of the steps in the decision making process. By applying these, you'll breathe a lot easier as to make choices throughout your lifetime. So we talked about the other day about before making a decision. So focus on the no lose model, do your homework, establish your priorities. Trust your impulses and lighten up. Most of all, lighten up. <laughs> it's not that serious. After making a decision, throw away your picture. Accept total responsibility. And don't protect, just correct. And I just spoke about that the other night with the pilots. So if you don't think it makes sense what I'm just saying to you, let me talk about it in a different way and summarize it in the no win model. Morning, Joanna. Morning, Anne-Marie. Uh, morning, Francis, Alana. Uh, morning, Margaret. Morning, Craig. So, the no-win decision-making process, in another way, before making the decision, focus on the no-win model. Listen to your mind drive you crazy. Paralyze yourself with anxiety as you try to predict the future. Does this all sound familiar? Don't trust your impulses. Listen to everyone, what everyone else thinks. Feel the heaviness of having to make the actual decision itself. And then after making the decision, create anxiety by trying to control all the outcomes. Blame someone else if it doesn't work out as you've pictured it. It's always somebody else's fault. I'm afraid if it is to be, it's up to me. And if it's not happened, I know where it lies. If it does work out, keep wondering if it would have worked out a better way. <laughs> That's comical, eh? So it actually works out for you, but could have done better. It's like people that actually get an offer for their house when you think about it. They get a fantastic offer, and then it's so quick to go, could I actually have gotten more? 
it's wait a minute, you're happy with what you've got and it's the right offer. Why are you wanting more? All of a sudden it's like, I could have got more, I could have got more. Um, so that's probably a good analogy. Don't correct if the decision is wrong. You have too much. Uh, don't correct it if the decision is wrong. You have too much invested. Does that sound familiar as well? Too much invested. I'm not going to correct it now. It's like, hey, change the record, change the track, correct it, sort it out. Come on and So does that sound painfully familiar? Yes. We certainly do know how to drive ourselves crazy. So now that I've just dem demonstrated the no-win and no-lose models as they pertain to the decision-making, well, I can really trust you could see the impossible and, and making a mistake, really. Just as each decision is an opportunity to learn, each mistake is also an opportunity to learn, rendering it impossible to actually make a mistake. I'll read that again. Just as each decision is an opportunity to learn, each mistake is an opportunity to learn, rendering it impossible to actually make a mistake. A great researcher having failed 200 times before he found the answer to one of his burning questions was asked, doesn't it bother you failed all those times? His answer was, well, I never really failed. I discovered 200 ways why not to do something. After much consideration, I've really come to the conclusion that if you haven't made any mistakes lately, you must be doing something wrong in your life. You'll never get to Hawaii or wherever it is that we spoke about, spoke about the pilot in the plane. You haven't even left the airport yet. You've never even gotten off the ground. You're taking no risks, nor are you enjoying the goodies in life has to offer. A total waste when you think about it. Remember, statues were never erected to critics. And the most successful people have made loads of mistakes on the way. Ask anybody you know is successful how many mistakes you've made. If they say I've made no mistakes, they're not successful at all. They never have been. They never will be. You need the mistakes to correct in order to get on the right path. It doesn't happen like that. Success is a journey. It is not a destination. I remember the time in my life when I was really fearful about anything, and that was at college, and it was always like that. And I'd, I'd, I'd fail on several occasions. So I just, I, I, I mean, I, I became, became a victim of my real insecurities. And I'd like to report that some Zen master around the world actually <laughs> changed all that in my life for me. But it really wasn't like that at all. And then I saw something quite profound. <laughs> so suddenly I realised I had to stop participating in the world. Um, with this enlightenment, um, I started to push myself out. I saw an uh, advert that actually says, get into the world. And it actually just spurred me off. And I saw other things throughout my life as well that actually did that and gave me that impetus and gave me that push. And all these wee things that pop into your brain and keep pushing you forward and just go out and do it. Baby steps, one step at a time. When you consider that mistakes are an integral part of living, it's amazing how we are taught to think that we must be perfect. The mistake in our thinking has created many fears about being adventurous and trying out new territories. Well, let's take an example. Favourite national pastime, football. It's extremely rare for a footballer to attain um, a certain amount of goals. Translated, that means having to keep going out there and doing it time and time again. But often, it doesn't take much to actually do it. If you look at most footballers and the amount of goals they've actually achieved in their life and they've actually scored, it's not that very many. And yet they're deemed to be an absolute success in what they do. So simple, isn't it? And yet they've only just kept going and going and going. You're not going to see, succeed in everything attempt in life. I mean, that's almost guaranteed. In fact, the more you do, the more you do in life, the more chance there is not to succeed in some of these things. But look how rich your life can be, however many adventures. Win or lose, you just keep winning. Using the off-course correct model that I just spoke about, you can now have the freedom of flying. Although you now know how to minimise your fears about the decision-making and, mis and making a mistake, you might notice that adopting these concepts presented are, difficult, are, are more difficult than they sound. Again, I, re I remind you that the lengthy process involved in behaviour change, it won't happen overnight. 
It won't happen in a month. It won't happen in two months. It won't happen in three months. It, a progression over a period of time. Simply being, keep working on it. Keep reinforcing the new way of thinking presented here by using the exercises I'm just about to talk about to help you push through your fears in the decision-making process or making mistakes process. So are you making mistakes lately? Listen to this. Are you making any mistakes lately? I hope so. Because it's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to grow and you will be successful as a result of doing that. So using the no-lose model, consider some decisions you're now facing and write down all the positive things about them. It can happen in either pathway. Whether it doesn't happen or whether it does happen, write down the positive aspects of that. Even if the outcome might not be what you picture, learn the concept. It doesn't really matter. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter in the bigger scope of things. By, st by st starting with little decisions you face each day, as you ponder and which suit to wear to the office, notice that really it doesn't matter or what top to wear or what trousers to wear or what shoes to wear. It doesn't matter what restaurant to eat. It doesn't really matter what movie to see. It doesn't matter. Each choice simply produces a different experience. Think about it like that. Slowly you'll begin to be able to, create, uh, to grasp this concept to larger and larger decisions. So put signs in your home and in your office that says it doesn't really matter to remind yourself that you're being needlessly obsessive and many people are like that <laughs> i'll stick my hand up to that one also put signs in your home and office that say so what i'll handle it if things don't work out the way you want so what what's the big deal anyway this reminder will help you lighten up about your life as you learn that you can handle whatever happens after you've made your decision Look at the clues in your life that suggest you're off course and begin making the game plan to correct it and the situation. And I'll see you tomorrow at 7.30.